Indian police raid a Bombay brothel. The madams are outraged. This is the end of a month-long Channel 4 investigation. We've come into the roof of this brothel that we've raided. Come, come. These teenage girls are victims of one of the fastest growing industries in the world. Sex traffic. India's northeast is famed for its tea estates and Himalayan views. It's the ancient crossroads of trading routes between Bhutan, Nepal, India and Bangladesh. And the town of Suliguri has always been at the hub of international trade. These days, that's nothing to be proud of. According to the UN's latest figures, about 30,000 children are trafficked into Calcutta and a lot of them come through Siliguri. Some are local girls, abducted from their families. Baruka, a self-help group, is fighting to rescue the children from the slave traders. So, Tamali, what is the, this sort of gallery? This is the first girl you rescued? She's still missing? She's still missing? Uh, rescued? Rescued? Rescue. 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 Rescued. Rescued. Somebody's saying that the problem of trafficking shown by this little board here in one village in northern India, that the trafficking problem is getting worse, mainly because people don't understand and that naive villagers, often illiterate, hand over their girls into marriage or are taken away to work uh, and disappear and they're simply traded in the big cities as prostitutes. In poor families, girls are often seen as a burden who'll need a dowry when they marry. Hello. It can sometimes make sense to send them away to work, but many don't come back. This is Rinki. She's from a family that has a missing daughter, one of about 30,000 people who go missing in this area every year. Papa? I'll ask you a question. The reason we came is that we heard that um, Nara Rai here says that his daughter Pinky was 13 when his brother turned up at their hut with a labor contractor offering her work in New Delhi. 15 days went by and then they got a phone call saying that she'd just run away. And he doesn't believe that they allowed her to run away, he believed that they just sold her. The poor are easy prey for the traffickers. And the victims and their parents suffer an unending agony. Jirmuti Burhan stopped me on the street. Jirmuti's just run up to me and embarrassingly enough kissed my feet begging for help because she has lost two daughters, one aged 10, one aged 11. The, the 11 year old disappeared when she was sent off to send, sell milk in the marketplace and three years later same thing happened to her younger sister who was then 10 years old and she hasn't heard from her daughters at all. This is a land of missing children. It's not just local children at risk. The trade is international. Worldwide traffickers add 3 million women and children to an ocean of sex slaves each year. A quarter of a million are smuggled through South Asia. Siliguri's border police struggle to stem the tide. How do you tell who is a trafficked child, who is a normal child, or...? From reliable source, source information, we got information that uh, they may have... Ah, uh, so you get advance warning, so. maybe from the Nepal side, or...? Or Bangladesh side. Or Bangladesh side. Especially from Bangladesh side. Girls are lured into slavery with promises of jobs in the big city, or simply kidnapped and lost to their families. But sometimes, a family fights back. I'm with uh, Probert. He's a security guard at the local stadium. 
Now, his no. daughter was trafficked all the way to Bombay. He got together with the local police and actually rescued her and three other girls and another 13 who were released into the custody of the Bombay police. Your daughter's here? Down here. So this, this couple here are the people that trafficked your daughter to Bombay. Bombay. To Bombay. How long was your daughter, Pratima, how long was she kept in Bombay? For nine months. Nine months. How old was she? Fourteen years old. Here she is. Pratima was drugged with a spiked mango juice, raped in Calcutta, and then sold to a brothel in Bombay. Hello. Hello. Hi, Robert. My name's Sam. Did they beat you a lot? Were they violent with you? Almost everybody used to beat her. And did you get to keep any of the money? No. Did you ever ask for help for them from the customers? They used to say that they will kill her if she did something like this. If you tried to escape, they would kill you. Patima had an extraordinary escape because some people tracked her down to Bombay and approached the brothel keeper and the brothel keeper let her go and she was able to be returned here to her family. If you met this trafficker, what would you do? I'd let you would kill him. Kill him. Pratima's father gave me some leads. I decided to see if I could follow her route and retrace the ordeal of one victim of an industry that rivals drugs and weapons. Stolen out of their fields or sold into slavery from the slums, the traffic girls from West Bengal and Bihar find their way onto these trains down into Calcutta where they will begin their lives as sex slaves. More than five million people struggle to get by in this swampy morass of a city. A girl smuggled into sex slavery can expect very little help. Here, the Tarts have very hard hearts. <laughs> I've come to Malka's house, as she's a madam, I'm trying to get an understanding of how the sex trade really works, why there is such a huge demand for girls, especially underage girls. I had a chat with one of the brothel regulars, closely supervised by Malka from Durba, the sex workers union. Hey, this is Sheikh Mohammed Inam, he's a, a client. And how often do you come here? <laughs> About three times a week. Do you ever see any girls here who are under 18? Whoops. Wrong question. Mahla interrupted and said, no, since Durba, her organization is working here, uh, there are no underage girls. But she does point out that women as young as 12 get married in India, although the official legal limit is 18. And in a society like that, it's inevitable that underage girls can end up in prostitution, although they're working very hard to uh, get the younger girls out. Calcutta might look pretty scruffy at the beginning, but it is at the center of India's economic boom with an enormous amount of information technology and other industries growing up out of this mess. And that is fueling a consumer boom in all kinds of things. Among the products widely sold on the streets of Calcutta's red light district are children. We had to film secretly because Durba, the sex workers' union, which controls these streets, doesn't like cameras. According to them, there aren't any underage prostitutes, but near here, Pratima had been raped, and some of these girls appeared to be in their early teens. What's your name? Munda. Munda. What's your name? Sunda. Sunda. How old are you? How old are you? Yeah, 19. 19. How old are you? Uh, 20, 24. 24? Yeah. Right, right. And the moon is made of cheese. 
If somebody came here and they said, we can take you away from here and give you an education, what would you say? Are you afraid of getting um, any diseases? She can't answer why not. If she, if she is 24 years old, right, that means she's old enough to have I was hustled off the streets by the madam. We're being uh, escorted back to their office. We were reminded that troublemakers got acid in their faces. The sex workers union insists that all prostitutes are over 18, they don't face violence and they are not exploited. Durba is lobbying for the legalization of prostitution and it's won the financial backing of the British government and Melinda Gates. But it would have been a very little help to a trafficked girl like Pratima. I've just come from Siliguri and up around there where I've met a number of girls who've been trafficked and some families of girls who have disappeared into the sex trade and there's, that is not voluntary that is slavery and therefore anybody who has sex with them is committing rape and some of these girls are under 18 so not only is it slavery and rape but it's rape of a, of a minor but Chuchu Dutta is Durba's boss and the son of a sex worker but Chachu says that he's, uh, his organization is opposed to any kind of uh, child labor, whether it's uh, in the construction industry or sex work, and that that is why his organization is getting together and has a series of self-regulatory bodies that uh, keep the young people and the unwilling workers, sex workers, out of the trade. He says that since 98, there aren't any underage girls working on the streets. But I've just taken a walk on the street here and I met about four girls at least who were definitely not over 18 and they weren't allowed to speak for themselves. He stuck to the party line. Any underage girls will not be allowed to work, they'll be rescued. And there aren't any underage prostitutes in Calcutta. Never mind the evidence of my own eyes, the UN says that 30,000 women and girls are forced into slavery through Calcutta every year. I wonder whose interests the sex workers union represent, enslaved prostitutes or the industry that enslaves them. The scale of this problem is phenomenal. Pratima's journey into and out of prostitution started here in Siliguri. That's where she was captured. She was then taken to Calcutta where she was raped and prostituted and then put on a train and sold into Sheila's brothel in Bombay. So I flew to the subcontinent's commercial capital. Sheila's did seem an improbable name for an Indian brothel. But I'd been given the address of someone who could help. The Rescue Foundation is one of the few organizations I've come across that actually rescues women and trafficked children from the brothels. And I'm going to try and find out if they know about this woman or this place called Sheila's Brothel. And how many girls have you rescued? That figure is only about 400 girls. 400, just yes. in Bombay? Just No, no, not in Bombay. Bombay, New Bombay. Uh, I interviewed a girl called Pratima who was rescued. She said she was held in a brothel called Sheila's. Sheila, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it? I, I know sure Sheila. In Sheila brothels, we rescue, I think, uh, in the last five years, uh, more than uh, 28 girls. 28 girls. Well, Krishna Acharya had a tip-off that sex slaves were still being held at Sheila's. We're going to go and see the local chief of police and see what he's going to do about it. 
Anharanath Wahuli seemed uncertain about the need for a raid. He believes that without prostitution there can be no civilization. This is the need of the society. This is the need of the male person. If they, uh, this need is not fulfilled, I think they will commit some rapes or some uh, modesty of the other good girls and good uh, ladies in the society. So this, this is the good thing for a society also. This is my uh, Your view. opinion. He yeah. did draw the line at child prostitution. If they are underage, you go in and get them out. Yeah, yeah. Well, the assistant district commissioner seems to be keen to conduct this raid. And he's also saying that um, everything's got to remain an absolute secret and we're not even going to use police from the area around the red light district because they can't be trusted. We're going to be using police that come from out of their area. <laughs> Only Balkrishna knows where Sheila's brothel is and he doesn't trust the police. We're heading off to Kamatipura but the police don't know where we're going. The actual target, the brothel, has been kept very closely secret by the Rescue Foundation to stop any last minute leakages through cell phones. <laughs> We're getting very close. So that's the second floor. Yeah, this is a ground floor. Ground floor, yeah. staircase, second floor, yeah. hiding space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Under the yeah. stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just one? Yeah, just one. <laughs> Now there are calls going out, warning calls. <laughs> Is this it? Give me light Please come here. Aha, a secret place. Ah, there's some girls in here. Okay. What's that other banging? I don't know. Me. Just keep an eye on them, Richard. There's one, two. Have a chat with these other girls and see if they want to get out. Yeah, more, four more. Ah, yeah. Come on, don't be a tell them, don't be afraid. We're not here to hurt you, okay? Seven, eight. They're un under here. Yeah. Are there any more down there? Good God! We have just taken ten girls. That's ten human beings trafficked and hidden in this space, out of this tiny hole here, which is four foot by three foot. Six girls emerged. Six. And there were four in the tiny space that I'm in right now. <laughs> They're all sticking to their story that they've been told to say, which is that they're 25 years old, which is self-evidently not the case. The girls are told to wait, and two police are posted on the doors while Balkrishna leads us to another part of the building. <laughs> Balkrishna knows that up here on the first floor there's a trapdoor that leads to another secret chamber. He's just arranging to get a crowbar to uh, break this lock. <laughs> These are the cells where young girls are forced to have sex with strangers just to earn their keep.
There we are. There's a trap door. Yeah, that one. I'll get out of the way. We could hear voices above us calling for help. They were short of air. Okay. She's tiny. All right. Come on then. Right. We've come into the <coughs> roof of the brothel that we've raided, and we've already brought down about six girls up here. The, the others are now being persuaded to come out. Uh, they've been shoved into this roof. Come, 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 come. Three of the girls who've come down have been suffering from a sort of suffocation. They've been very short of breath, almost unable to walk. But the other police, they're all they've got. No, no. ladies came here, all mob. But the ones next door? Next door also. They, <laughs> they all ran away. Yeah. So what started off as an incredibly dramatic raid has now collapsed into farce. All of the girls have been allowed to run away into the crowd. How are you going to find these girls? They will get the girls. Okay. I hope so, because they could be in danger. No, no, no. no. Their life? Yeah. Never, never. Never? No. Never be there. We have your guarantee of that, do we? 100% guarantee. Their lives are not in danger. Okay, good. All right. Now I see what you face. Yeah. Unbelievable. A third of the girls that Balkrishna has rescued over the last 15 years are HIV positive. The sex trade is booming alongside India's economy. But little is being done to curb the demand for underage girls. So more and more will be condemned to an early death. 